when it comes to all of the things that I need to do, there's many, many different things. Not just in music production or, or related to the work that I do here online or stuff like that, but also just in general, like you can see I'm watering one of my plants right now. And as you can imagine, that kind of chaos that you have in real life doesn't really translate well into any form of creativity. So honestly, having a clear head is very, very important when you're writing music. So that's why today I want to show you exactly what I use in order to make sure that my head isn't cluttered while I'm actually producing. And that is the software DB Done. As you can see, it just opens up like this and I can see all of the individual projects that I'm working on. You can see that I have all projects over here because we both see the Ableton Live projects as well as the Reaper projects. And as you can see, this is just an overview of all of the individual projects that you have. Of course, to actually go and do something with a project, you open it up. But I first want to stay a little bit on this page as well because there's some really cool things going on that you may not see. Of course, you have the tag system over here where you can choose between different BPMs, different key signatures. I write side end, so there's only like one time signature in here. We can sort projects for which I have the companion plugin linked, which means that there is a preview for this project. This is actually very easy to record directly from the project and I'm going to show you how to set it up in a little bit. Of course, we can also choose the DAW that we're using here. And one of the other things that we can see is we can see the plugins that we are using. So for example, if I want a very specific plugin and I want to see which of my projects uses, for example, M limiter X, I'm able to see all of the projects that load that particular plugin. The final thing that I can do over here is search by project faces. So if I'm looking for all of my draft mixes, I can see them over here. If I'm looking for all of my final mixes, I can see that I haven't finished yet. And I get really sad because I realize how much work I still have left to do before I can actually release my album. That aside though, that means that we over here just have one massive list of all of your projects and that might not be what you want. For that, we do have a little bit of a grouping system which are called stacks. As you can see, I have five different stacks over here. I have one for my mixes. I have everything that I'm doing after the album. I have the actual productions for my album. I have all of my different sessions and then I have all of my different client mixes. And adding stuff to a stack is actually fairly easy. I actually have to add a few projects to a stack so what we're going to do is we're just going to add to stack. This one is going to be a session, as you can see. I have another session over here. So add to stack session. Actually, if you do have multiple projects that you want to add to a stack, what you can also do is just select and then just click all of them. But this means that you're able to organize your projects much more in different folders. And honestly, I like this approach much more than the actual folders that I use to organize all of my projects or to save all of my projects. I wouldn't really call this organized because I just dump it all in one big folder. But this way, as you can see, it's a little bit more just nice looking and you can also start to associate different covers with different stacks. That is also true for all of the auto-generated images over here. Now, before we organize some more, let's first organize that channel subscription that you haven't done yet. Why? Why wouldn't you just like subscribe? Like I'm right here, I'm just making content for you and you just get it in your inbox if you do. So just do it. Now going into the individual projects, there's some cool things that we can do. We've already looked a little bit at these different stages over here, but of course I can assign those. What I can also assign is tasks. Here I have a date that I can select at which time I need to finish that task. So if you're the kind of person that really needs to set deadlines with themselves, then this is a way to do that. You can also add files to a project. This is an easy way to collect all of the files and just make sure that everything is in one place. You can add different exports, different renders, different extra files that you're using, all of that kind of stuff. Same is true for links here. You can just add a URL and a name. Say, for example, that you have something that you're sampling from online and you want to save the link that you're sampling. And this is a way to do that. And then finally, the thing that I actually like using is the notes. As you can see here, right now I have revisions. These are all of the mixing revisions that I have to make to this particular track. And I'm literally just going to have this list open on my third monitor. Well, on my first and second monitor, I'm going to have my DW where I'm actually going to be working on the mixes. So this is what you're able to do within each of the projects. Now, if you actually want to set up these kind of stages, what you have to do is actually go into settings here. So you can go into, I believe, projects and then add project phases to it. Of course, then you also have other properties that you may want to check out. Now for me personally, I don't really care too much about all of the different 
things that you're able to do in here. Like I'm probably never going to add files or links or tasks to any of my projects. What I really care about and what is really handy for me personally is just an overview of all of the last projects that I've been working on in any DAW that I have, because I can just go onto any of these projects and just click here and it just opens it up. This is honestly already much faster than just going in here and going through all of your recent projects and trying to find it in here. This is much harder to read and process, even if it's going to be close up here, than finding the project in a system like this. Now, the final thing that I want to show you is how to actually record your like sample that you're going to play. So I'm quickly going to go here and I am going to go to all plugins here. I believe this is already scanned, yes. We're just going to give this example and then we're going to turn off auto capture here for a second because then it's just going to record five seconds of the track and I want to be able to set up a custom length and I'm just gonna hit record. And maybe instead of having it on the reference track, I'm actually going to have it on the right track. So now it just happened recorded 16 bars. If we go back into DB Done, we should see it update. Right here in Sonic Ascendance, we can actually play this. So as you can see, it's really, really quickly. It just instantly assigns it to the project. And that means that you have a little preview for all of your projects. Now, the final reason why I like this software so much is really because of their business model. And that is because when it comes down to it, you can basically start using everything in the software for free. The only limitation that you are going to have is the amount of projects that you're going to be able to load into it. So as you can imagine for somebody like me who has a lot of different projects that I actually want to keep track of and that aren't just like very old things that I will never need again. For me, it's actually important to pay for something like this, but just for testing it out and just to see if it vibes with you as an organization software, you can do that for free. And I find that is very, very important because these kind of softwares, they either vibe with you or they don't. And when they don't and you're already stuck to it, it's really annoying maybe trying to get rid of it. Maybe some of these types of project organizations actually make changes to your project. DBDun doesn't do that. DBDun is very strongly against actually opening up files and editing files. They are reading your files to, for example, be able to see, you know, which plugins are in there and that kind of stuff and what the BPM is, which I believe right now they're only able to do with Ableton projects, but in the future that is going to come for other project types as well. But they're not writing to the projects in any way. So you're actually safe from, you know, not destroying your projects in any way when you decide to stop using this particular software. Now, if you are interested in using this software and you want to use the actual paid version, there's a way that you can do that that makes me a little bit of money. So that would be very nice if you do that. And that is by using the promo code, which you can find on the screen right now. That is also where I'm going to leave the link to in the description if you want to check this out. So if you do check that out and you make a purchase, thank you very much as that is a great way to support the channel. I also want to thank DB Done for sponsoring this video, which currently is running to its end. So let me know what you think of it. Let me know if this is the kind of tool that you would use in your music production. And if you do use it, which feature do you like the most? But that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. You can support the channel by watching some more of my videos. That is why there's two videos up on the screen right now for you to choose from. So just pick one and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.